Okay, hey YouTube. So last night, I watched the entirety of the ESPYs so that I could view Caitlyn Jenner's portion in context because I wanted to see how did the athletes react to her compared to how did they react to everybody else. I wanted to see, you know, how was she treated? How was um, her story sort of told compared to some of these other stories that were shared? and things like that. And I think it's really beneficial to have that context when you go to um, sort of unpack the reaction, unpack the actual you know, speech itself, the introductory video, and things like that. And so because I watched the entire ESPYs, I got to see Danielle Green, the Notre Dame basketball player who went on to join the military, lost an arm, in service to our country and now went back to school got a master's and is doing social work with wounded vets it was a fantastic story a kind of very great call to action of whatever your passion is is finding that purpose and kind of making it happen like what are you doing here on earth with your time and I think that's a fantastic uh, story to start with she won the Pat Tillman Award for Service, and if you know Pat Tillman's story, you know that he left the NFL, he left a lucrative career to go serve his country. And so a lot of people leading up to Caitlyn's um, SB were saying that there were more deserving people like Noah Galloway, a white wounded warrior who um, competes in some athletic events and things like that, who's a double amputee. Uh, who deserved it more. And so if you look at what Danielle Green said about finding your purpose and making the world a better place, how does arguing about who deserves it more accomplish that? Like, why don't you find your issue, your cause, and you go shout it from the rooftops and make it bigger and better, rather than just say, oh, well, th this other guy, he deserves it more than Caitlyn Jenner. But let's move on to the next person who everybody thinks uh, should have won the award instead, and that is Lauren Hill. And so Lauren Hill, for those of you who don't know, is the 19-year-old girl who died from an inoperable brain tumor, but before she did, she raised one and a half million dollars for cancer research and was able to play in her first college basketball game, scored four points, and kind of realized one of her life dreams as a result of that. Her family got up on stage, accepted the, the award on her behalf for best moment, um, and um, even her mom commented in the media that, you know, they weren't creating this controversy of, you know, Lauren deserves it more, and she said that, you know, if Lauren was still alive today, she would probably look at this reaction and think, you know, what, what's, what's going on? Like, why can't you just let Caitlyn be? Um, so let, let's, let's pause for a second here and let that sit in, that wounded warriors and, you know, cancer victims' families are saying, kind of, go out and do your, do your thing, like, make your life matter, like, go for your dreams, and instead we have people criticizing Caitlyn for kind of living her own truth which seems like a really weird juxtaposition, right? Because it is. And so <laughs> moving on past that, um, Devin Still, the father of Leah Still, the uh, winner of the ESPY for Jimmy, Jimmy V, Jimmy Valvano Perseverance Award, um, gave a very emotional speech um, on behalf of his daughter who couldn't be there because she's still recovering. And um, everybody is saying that they're braver or they're more courageous than Caitlyn and trans people in general. And it's like, so they're getting recognized and, um, you know, they should have gotten more recognition or should Caitlyn just have gotten no recognition? And I think that's a big problem with the uh, sort of the critiques and the criticisms here is that it's not about ethics in journalism or ethics in the ESPYs or award shows or whatever. It's really trans misogyny. It's really cis sexism. 
it's transphobia, it's this anti-trans bias, and you can see that plain as day in the comments. You can see people calling Caitlyn and trans people freaks, mentally disturbed, none of which is new to the discussion. But what Caitlyn's speech did do was highlight some of these issues faced by trans youth, faced by trans women, violence, discrimination, suicide rates, things like that. And um, the fact is, is that a large part of this problem are the very people who are condemning Caitlyn winning the award. And by the way, this is the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. What people sort of don't realize is how Arthur Ashe became a spokesman for HIV and AIDS. It wasn't because he wanted to. It wasn't because this was a cause he wanted to champion. Um, it was because a newspaper was going to run a story about his medical condition. And so he chose to go out and own that story rather than let the newspaper do it themselves. Does that sound familiar to you at all? It should, because that's basically Caitlin's story. I'm sure she would have preferred to transition in private and just finish out her life, kind of as her authentic self in peace. But she couldn't because the media forced her to come out. The media forced her to decide to take control of her story and go out and share it. So she is winning the award for the very same reason that the award is named after Arthur Ashe. And granted, Arthur Ashe did kind of break racial barriers and things like that in tennis as well, um, which contributes to his legacy, certainly. But when people talk about his advocacy work for AIDS and HIV, that's why he did it. Not because he originally wanted to or chose it, but because he was sort of forced into owning it. Just like Caitlin was forced into owning her trans status. And that's the great irony in this, is that you know people are so put off by the ESPYs giving her this award as though she doesn't deserve it, even though it's you know very similar to his story. Um, even though their comments and the way that they phrase these comments show exactly why it is still brave to transition in American society today. And so these critics these bigots um, can sit on a stick and twist like <laughs> get out of here with this whole thing because you didn't care about the ESPYs before and the ratings show it this was the highest rated ESPYs broadcast ever while some of that is probably due to the fact it was on ABC rather than ESPN a lot of that has to do with the fact that Caitlyn Jenner was on it people wanted to see it People wanted to see her. And she brought the ratings to ESPN. This wasn't a publicity grab on her part. This was a sort of way for ESPN and ABC maybe to increase the ratings for a show that people haven't really ever cared about before. And now all of a sudden they do because a trans woman is winning an award for courage that they don't think she should get because, you know, somebody who suffered from cancer, somebody who, you know, joined the military and was wounded deserves it more. Um, there are many different types of courage. There are many different types of bravery. Firefighters are brave. Soldiers are brave. Cancer patients are brave. A kid standing up to a bully is brave. A trans person being themselves is brave. And if you want to sit there and try to rank order bravery, go ahead. But your list is going to look very different than the person sitting next to you and the person sitting next to them. So this isn't about who is the bravest or the most deserving of the award. This is about a conversation that America needs to have about trans lives and Caitlin did a phenomenal job bringing it up.